Hi, everyone, and welcome to our next episode on the senses. So today we're going to focus on the rest of the senses that we haven't already talked about. So that would basically be everything besides vision, right? We're going to cover hearing, smell, taste, um, and we're also going to cover your skin senses and something called kinesis or kinesthetics and your sense of balance as well. So first we're going to talk about hearing. And kind of like vision, there's a lot more to know for hearing than there is to know for a lot of the other senses. So I'm going to start with the biggest chunk of information first. All right, so hearing, like I said, is very similar to vision in that when we try to figure out where hearing comes from, how we know what certain sounds are, we look at sound waves, right? So we looked at light waves with vision and color. We look at sound waves when we look at hearing, okay? So, and hearing is determined by the vibrations in the air, right? When you speak, you put out pressure and that pressure creates sound waves, okay? Now, if you look, the sound waves mean a couple of different things. So loudness in a sound. Like if I'm talking very loud, or if I'm whispering, right? That is determined by the amplitude, which is the height of the wave, okay? And you measure this in decibels, all right? And humans can, you know, uh, generally from anything from 0 to 140 and 110 above is harmful. The pitch, so whether or not you're up here or down here, right? That is determined by the frequency of the wave, which is measured in hertz. And it's uh, the frequency is the distance between like the the distance between the wavelengths. And then we also have something called timbre, right? And this is the quality of the sound. This is actually complexity in the sound waves. And no most sounds are not just composed of one single type of sound wave, and timbre adds complexity. The example of this would be the difference between knowing um, like a C played by a flute and a C played by a clarinet, right? That would be timbre, the quality of the sound. Okay, so you see this is frequency and high frequency, right? So it has to do with the wavelength, the space in between the waves. While loudness has to do with amplitude, which is from the top to the bottom of the wave. Again, we have another example of this. So you see here, softer sounds have a low amplitude. Loud sounds, loud noises have a uh, high amplitude. And then for lower pitch, lower pitch, right, the wavelengths, and high pitch, the wavelengths. So you can see again. All right, so how does hearing actually work, right? So the first thing is the vibrating waves of air enter the outer pinna or enter the outer ear through the pinna. This is your pinna, right? So the sound wave goes in here and it goes through this canal right here and it hits something called the tympanic membrane known to us normals as the eardrum, right? So it hits the eardrum and the eardrum right vibrates. And then this vibration, right, shakes the three bones of the inner ear. They're the tiniest bones in your body, right? They're called the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. They vibrate here, right? These guys vibrate, and then they send that message to the cochlea, which is right here. The cochlea, right, it looks like a snail, okay? It's all coiled up. The cochlea focuses on the vi- focuses the vibrations on the basilar membrane. So inside this cochlea, right here, you have, see it's kind of stretched out. At the bottom of it, you have something called the basilar membrane. The hair cells are attached to the basilar membrane. The fluid is moved by the pressure and the sound wave. So you see here, right, the fluid is moved, and the hairs are moved with the fluid. And then the hairs that move uh, impact the basilar membrane, and the basilar membrane is attached to the auditory nerve right? And the auditory nerve goes to the thalamus and then to your temporal lobe, okay? So that's the steps of hearing. Like I said here, the neural messages transfer to the auditory cortex in the temporal lobe of the brain. So how specifically do we perceive pitches? Like how do we know what, how does the brain know what a pitch is, right? How does the, how does the sound wave tell the basilar membrane? Okay, so one theory is that the sound is based on the location that the wave hits the basilar membrane. So the wave comes in, right, and it bounces off the basilar membrane. And where it does that at the peak is the is the is where the most, like, neurons fire, the most cells fire, the most hair cells fire. So then that tells your brain that that was the peak, which then allows your brain to understand the pitch or, the you know, the, the type of sound, the pitch of the sound, okay? Okay. Um, this works for a lot of sounds, but the problem is, is that you can't actually measure all sound this way. So the different, like the next type of theory is frequency matching theory. So basically what they believe is that when the hair cells are activated, 
they, uh, they're, they start firing, right? And the firing rate of those nerves and those cells is the same as the frequency of the sound wave. So if a sound is going at 20 hertz, then the neuron fires 20 times a second. Or if it's 150 hertz, 150 times a second. This is used for low frequencies. So this is just something kind of interesting in terms of, I don't know how much, how much or how much you've actually thought about why we have two ears, but our sounds are used to help us localize, our ears are used to help us localize sounds. So if you ever realize when you're like, huh, and you'll turn, right, your, uh, the sound is actually louder and gets to the ear quicker if it's coming from that direction, which is how your brain is then um, able to interpret the direction the sound is coming from, even if you're not looking at it, right? So if I close my eyes, I would still be able to tell if you were on this side or this side of me based on the, um, the way it hits one ear over the other. So that's all for now, AP Psychos. And remember, psychology is flipping awesome.